At 7, they went from the streets into housing in the South Bay, but their safe space is slowly deteriorating. This place has got cockroaches, has got water leaking from the ceiling, has got mold. Who's responsible for helping them out of another tough spot? And a canine crew from California among those heading to Maui, their tough task in the midst of the destruction. It's a lot of responsibility. Uh, it means a lot. I've, I've met people impacted by this already. He is one of the youngest mayors in the county. We check back in with the mayor of Hercules, how he's taking on his city's growing pains. Historically, the daytime population is super low, so we've never had to think about what walkability looks like at 2.30 in the afternoon. This is CBS News Bay Area with Juliet Goodrich. Hello, let's get to some breaking news. CBS News has confirmed that a grand jury in Georgia looking into former President Trump's alleged efforts to overturn the 2020 election has returned 10 indictments. But we are still waiting to learn who the defendants are and the exact charges they face. The documents still have to be processed by the court before they are made public. If that happens during that newscast, we will bring you a special report. In other news, what was once a lifeline is now a hazard zone in the South Bay. Homeless hotel tenants in San Jose are sounding the alarm about deplorable living conditions. In fact, they told our Devin Feely they're losing hope the city will do anything to fix things. Homeless hotels was a pandemic era policy. The idea was to get people housed as quickly as possible in the middle of a public health crisis. But the problem now is that many of those facilities have fallen into disrepair. A couple of times people try to break the windows or get in. And all I did was get out and start swinging something, you know, and cussing at them. Cheryl Fleming lived on the street for 20 years, much of that time in her car. And at first, when she moved into the Sure Stay Hotel in San Jose, she thought it was a godsend until she started getting sick. I got pneumonia and I couldn't even pick myself up off the floor. Um, he had to come and get me and take me to the hospital. Cheryl and other residents say the site has steadily fallen into disrepair, describing conditions as unsafe and unhealthy. This place has got cockroaches, has got water leaking from the ceiling, has got mold. Mark, who asked us only to use his first name, showed us the hole in his ceiling where rainwater seeps into his unit from a leaky roof. And now he put tape around the electrical outlets, hoping to prevent cockroaches from getting inside. These conditions right here aren't worth living for, but it's better than the streets. You got a, you got a bed, a roof over your head. The city of San Jose purchased the Sure Stay Hotel for $12 million in state money during the pandemic. But perhaps sensing the extent of the repairs the site needed, sold it to the county's housing authority for just $1 last year. The county has yet to officially take over management of the site. San Jose Mayor Matt Mahan described the current conditions as, quote, appalling, writing in a prepared statement that we need to demand more accountability from our site operators so that we can continue to provide safe, dignified alternatives to our streets and creeks. Cheryl says she has heard the promises before but has seen little progress in their wake. She says it's hard to believe that this time will be any different. No respect, no dignity from, from them. Many of the residents that we spoke to today say they feel stuck. They don't want to go back out onto the street, even though they say their living conditions currently are only modestly better. Now, the county is expected to take over management of the facility by the end of the year. Residents say their very concerned conditions will be allowed to further deteriorate before then. San Jose city workers won't be walking off the job tomorrow. City workers say they've made significant progress in labor negotiations, and the planned three-day strike is now on hold until the San Jose City Council approves their terms, which is scheduled to happen tomorrow. The union, which represents 4,500 city workers. And now on to the Maui wildfires. Crews from California are among those on the ground with the painstaking task of trying to find the missing in all of that devastation. Lahaina has been the hardest hit. 99 people now confirmed dead. But the governor said hundreds still have yet to check in with loved ones. Ariane Makovic is in studio now with more on how help and support 
and the Golden State is certainly pouring in. Yeah, we know firsthand, of course, how devastating wildfires can be and how heartbreaking it is to have to sift through the ashes. A California urban search and rescue canine team just left from Maui to help search in the destruction. These dogs are trained in finding human remains. They're going to be in Maui for at least two weeks. Authorities have warned, though, that the effort to find and identify the dead is still in its early stages. We want to get to work. We want to see how many people who can help out out there, bring closure to those family members. And, and with the support of these dogs, hopefully nobody gets injured. And we just try to do the best we can. Now, the fire is already the deadliest in U.S. wildfire in more than a century, surpassing the 85 people who were killed in the campfire in Paradise five years ago. And the town of Paradise posted a message on its Facebook page today saying the town of Paradise extends its heartfelt sympathies to the people of Hawaii. Having experienced tragedy, we are unfortunately familiar with the unimaginable experiences you are facing. From one Paradise to another, we are here for you in whatever you may need. And an East Bay pizza shop is holding a fundraiser to try to help Free Whale Wheel Pizza Company in Clayton. Owner Randy Martin has family in Hawaii. He's donating 50% of the sales of his Pineapple Express pizza to the Red Cross. Living in Northern California, we understand how devastating these wildfires can be. We just wanted to send aloha to Maui and the Hawaiian Islands during these difficult times. And over the weekend, the high school football team in Pittsburgh raised money for Maui with a car show and scrimmage event. So nice to see you. All right. And thank you. We have been compiling information on how you can help the fire victims. It's under top stories on KPIX.com. Contra Costa County is projected to have the largest population growth in the Bay Area in the next four decades. The state looked at migration, birth and death rates, and they found that the county could see a 24 percent jump in its population by 2060. There are already signs of growth in Hercules. In fact, the city added about a thousand new residents just in the past year. And at the helm is one of the youngest mayors in the country. We introduced you to him late last year, Alexander Walker Griffin. Well, he grew up in Hercules. At the age of 13, he got interested in politics. Back in November, at the age of 25, he was elected mayor. Wilson Walker shows us how the new mayor is handling this growing city. So, man, how you doing? You know, it's a very public facing job, so you have to be willing and to talk to people, at, I mean, truly any time of the day. Um, but at the same time, you kind of make it what you want to make, right? You know, you now about eight months into his term, Alex Good Walker job. Griffin is in many ways right the familiar face who has been around oh, yeah, Hercules yeah, yeah. most good, of his good. life. How you doing, man? How you doing? Good, good man. I'm with you. Good yeah. He is also the mayor, and his hometown is facing its own collection of Bay Area growing pains. You know, like any other city, housing affordability. I mean, it's a shame that people like myself who grew up in the city, you're likely not going to be able to afford staying here or moving back here if you if you left. And for Hercules, the sudden arrival of new people is creating challenges beyond affordability. You know, historically, most people, if, if minus the laboratory here in town, the daytime population is super low. So we've never had to think about what walkability looks like at 2.30 in the afternoon. We didn't have to think about how many of our bathrooms at our parks are open because everybody was gone, right? We didn't have to think about, hey, what programs are over there for senior citizens or what this housing plan is going to actually look like. Yes, I think since the pandemic, more people have come out here because there's more space. Leslie is among the newcomers. She has been here for about four years now. I don't think the infrastructure really can support all of the people kind of moving out here. We're really excited for this. This is a huge project for us in the city. Basic infrastructure is one thing Hercules has to get up to scale. Woo! In this case, rebuilding an old road that was crumbling under new traffic. And we don't have a clear sidewalk for people who are walking down, uh, walking down this road. It's kind of a major artery for us here in the city. So they have new developments, but now there's no, there's no businesses to like really attract more people, I would say. And that's the other civic infrastructure Hercules is trying to build up. All of the things these new people might want or need, especially those who are now working from home. The city is actually offering up to $25,000 to help fill empty commercial spaces. And so to the businesses out there, if you want to come set up shop in Hercules, feel free to reach out and we'll help you get that squared away. So yeah, we, we finally had to think about, hey, what is like actually living in town and being in Hercules in the middle of the week look like? You know, what's fun out there? What's there actually for me to do? Like, and one request he gets a lot of is not unique to Hercules. One of the things I hear all the time is, hey, let, can we get a pickleball court here in town? 
And I'm like, hey, I'm totally in favor of it. I, I totally support it. But then at the same time, you know, just kind of hearing where people are and what they're thinking about and, you know, really hear from the community. Another question the mayor says he gets all the time is what is the status of the Hercules hub that is a plan to bring 1400 more homes, a capital corridor train station and a ferry terminal to the waterfront here. Well, the city pushing ahead with that with state and federal help. They just got $30 million of additional funding to push that towards construction. The mayor says he is hopeful that something will be taking shape out here sometime in 2026 or 2027. The mayor has been working with the Biden administration on that Hercules hub. He's actually heading to the White House on Wednesday. He was invited to mark the one year anniversary of the Inflation Reduction Act, which includes money for cutting carbon emissions with transit funding.